Ability AI has just released stable video diffusion. So this is the first foundational model for generative video based on the image model stable diffusion. So here are some samples which you can see over here of video which has been generated, right? And uh, they have also released this model on their GitHub repository. They have the code for stable video diffusion and the weights uh, required to run locally can be found on their Hugging Face page. Okay, so this is the Hugging Face page where you can find the weights. I will share it in the description of the video. This is their GitHub page where they are talking about um, stable video diffusion. It's an image to video model and it has been released for research purposes. There are two models, SVD and SVDXT. Uh, so the first one generates 14 frames at a resolution of 576 into 1024 given a context frame of the same size. The second one is the same architecture except that it generates 5, 25 frames. Okay. Uh, so here are some samples which are shown over here. The same samples are shown here as well, uh, right? And uh, this model can be adaptable to numerous video applications like multi-view synthesis, etc. They're also going to release a text to video interface somewhere in the future, right? And this tool will showcase the practical application of stable video diffusion in numerous sectors, including advertising, education, entertainment, and beyond. So here they have a preview of this particular tool, uh, text to video, this thing, right? Astronaut walking on the moon. And then you have two blue jays on the top of a building, right? These videos are quite nice, very, um, you know, well, well generated videos. Now the thing is, if you look at their uh, Hugging Face page where they have their model weights released, they have the limitations put over here that it can generate only short videos, which are less than four seconds. The model may generate videos without motion or very slow camera pans. The model cannot be controlled through text. The model cannot render legible text. So this is an early version of this model. But then fine tuning this model on, uh, you know, your use case or a lot of other videos is definitely going to improve the performance. Okay. Uh, and what else are they saying about uh, this model over here? Um, yeah, there is this paper which explains about you know, what is the architecture of this model. So the model is makes use of stable uh, diffusion 2.1, which is, um, you know, again, fine tuned on images. Then uh, they add uh, convolution and attention, temporal convolution and attention layers to this, you know, image uh, backbone, basically stable diffusion 2.1 fine tuned backbone to create this video uh, diffusion, video latent diffusion models. Okay. And then they have versions of this, like which is one is a text to video model, and other one is an image to video model. Further details are present over here. Uh, another interesting thing is that they created a huge data set for training these models. Okay, um, so here are some details of that. So, what they do is that, uh, you know, uh, for uh, curating of this data, uh, what they did was. Uh, they collected an initial data set of long videos, which form the base data for video pre-training stage. To avoid cut and fades in the synthesized video, they apply a cut detection pipeline in a cascaded manner, you know, and they generate clips. Now for these video clips, they annotate with uh, three different synthetic uh, captioning methods. First, they use image captioner to annotate the mid frame of each clip, and then use vblip to obtain a video based caption. Finally, they generate a third description of the clip via an LLM based summarization. So in this way, they created a large video data set consisting of 580 million annotated video clip pairs. So this is a really huge data set. Okay. So in this data set, when they investigated, they found that there are some videos which could degrade performance. So using some optical flow and other methods, they removed some of those these things. Then they also apply optical character recognition to rem uh, remove clips which contains large amount of written text. Then they annotate first, middle and last frames of each clip with clip embeddings, right? Which uh, creates the text image similarities basically. So in this way, they have created their data set, so which is a huge data set. Okay. So details are present over here about these uh, data sets. So I'll be putting the link to this paper. You can check it out. This is a very interesting development. And what they're saying is that this model is, uh, you know, better than say runway or pickle labs, 
when they conducted some user preference studies. That is what they are saying. At the time of the release, in their foundational form, through external evaluation, these models surpassed the leading closed models in user preference studies. So you can actually check this particular release statement as well as the paper and their GitHub. I'll be putting the links to all of these in the description of the video. So this is a short video on stable video diffusion. I hope this is useful to you. If you like this video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.